We're looking at leak code number 39. It's called combination sum. This is a series of three different prob problems that deal with combinations, combination sums one, two, and three. Now, if you have not done combination sum three or two, I highly suggest going over those videos before you try to do this one. It's just gonna make a lot more sense if you go through those previous two videos before you attempt this one. But you're welcome to attempt this one right off the gate if, if you feel you're close to it and you just need you know, those, those um, dots to connect. Okay, so we're gonna also use a backtracking template to solve this problem. It's the same template I've been using to solve every problem in this playlist. It's a very powerful template that allows you to solve pretty much any problems dealing with permutations, subsets, or combinations. Okay, so let's jump into this. Um, we are given an array of distinct integers candidates and we have a target integer target and we want to return all a list of all unique combinations of candidates where the chosen numbers sum to the target and we can return the combinations in any order. And the thing with this one is, is that the same number may be chosen from candidates in an unlimited number of times. Two combinations are unique if the frequency of at least one of the chosen numbers is different, and it's guaranteed that the number of unique combinations that the sum that sum up to target is less than 150 combinations for the given input. So we can see here two, three, six, seven. The target is seven. We're having two, two, three, and seven. And then here we have eight, and we're going to have four twos. So we can have duplicates. That's the that's the constraint on this particular problem. Okay, so how, how do we go through this? So let's go over the recursion tree and then we'll go over the template and how we can apply a template, make some slight modifications and solve this. And uh, before we do that, we'll just conceptually go over what's going on in the template, like what's going on in the, in the code underneath the hood. So we're gonna start with a slate, okay? It'll be an empty array. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna start here at I and then we'll have a J variable here. Hang on, I'm just gonna go ahead and make this so I can grab it. Okay, we're gonna have a J variable here. Okay, and what we wanna do is we wanna go down this tree and we wanna add and remove the Jth variable as we scan down the tree. Okay, so let's just kinda go over this step by step. So here in the slate on our first level of the tree, we're gonna start at I and we're gonna start at J and we're gonna put in two, then we're gonna increment J here. Uh, and we're gonna put in three on the slate. We're gonna then go ahead and increment J. And we're not dealing with the recursion yet, we're just looking at what's happening at this first level. We're gonna uh, put in six here. Okay, and then we're gonna increment J here to seven, and we're gonna push uh, this seven onto the slate. All right, now that's just what's happening at every, every level. Now what's happening when we make our recursive call? Let's say we're, we're talking about this two here, right? What do we wanna put in our, in our recursive call as we build out the rest of the tree? So, Normally, in the other combinations, what we did was we went ahead and incremented j and put j plus 1 into our recursive call and built the tree out from there. In this case, what we want to do, because we're dealing with repeats, we want to just go ahead and put in j into the recursive call. Okay, so what's that going to look like? That means when we get to this 2, we're going to get 2 and then 2, because we're going to start at where j is. We're going to get 2 and 3. We're gonna get two and six, and we're gonna get two and seven, right? Now, let's look at what's happening at, at this, this uh, level here. We'll go back one level and look at what's happening um, at that three. We can see here that if we, uh, if we increment j, right? Okay, we're here, and we pass j into the recursive call, what are we gonna get? We're gonna get three, 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 six, and three, seven. 
And so you can see that we're going to handle these duplicates if we pass in j. If we pass in j plus 1, we're going to get 3, 6, and 3, 7. And if we pass in uh, i, okay, we'll get it. But then what we're going to get is we're going to get 3, 2, 3, 3, 3, 6, and 3, 7. The problem with that is, is that we get repeats. Let me just make that a little bit clearer, that if we put, put in i on our recursive call, then what it'll look like is we'll get 3, 2, 3, 3, 3, 6, and 3, 7. And the issue with this is, is that we're going to get repeats, right? 3, 2, and 2, 3 are going to be essentially the same because we're looking at the target sum. And so that's why what we want to pass into our recursive depth first search uh, recursive helper is we want to pass in j. We don't want to increment j, we just want to pass in j, and that way we handle any of these duplicates. Okay? And then what do we want to do? And we have, we have three cases. We have our backtracking case, we have our base case, and then we have our recursive case. This is what we're doing in the recursive case. What about our backtracking case? Well, we're just going to subtract from target on every recursive call. So if the target is ever less than zero, meaning that if the sum of this is ever greater than target, then we just backtrack. Okay, we, we just prune it right there. So we'll never even go down this tree because there's nothing in this tree that's going to equal the target. We've already gone over the target, right? And our second case is, is what if, well, what if the target uh, is equal uh, is equal to zero. So we have the target, right? So in this case, let's see here, we have six, seven, five. So if we come here, uh, let's see, where would we actually hit our target? Uh, well, we could even just do, uh, let's say our target was eight. I'll just do this to make it simple. And we go all the way down here, two, 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 two then we can say that, okay, we finally hit our base case at that leaf level, and then we can push that into our result. Okay, so that's the idea behind it. I'm not going super in depth on this tree because I highly recommend checking out the other videos in the playlist. It goes over the, the tree construction, so I don't wanna to spend too much time on, on this one, but if you go over combination sum two and three, uh, it will it will go a little bit more in depth on how this tree is constructed. Now let's just quickly talk about time and space complexity here. Um, the thing is is that because we're dealing with duplicates, this this is very hard to calculate what the time and space complexity is uh, with this because we're dealing with duplicates and this tree can get really really big overall. So typically when we're dealing with um, these combination problems, we're looking at O of 2 to the n times n on time and O of 2 to the n times n on space. Okay, But in this particular case, it's going to be something quite different. And you can go to the solution here on Leap Code to try to, try to garner what exactly is the time and space complexity here. We're going to have n number of candidates, t is the target value and m is the minimum value, so it's going to look something like this, n to the t divided by m plus 1. Okay, And our space complexity is going to look something similar as well. It's really hard to derive that through looking at the tree so if you get this in an interview, I would just explain that it's, it's a hard thing to really kind of ar arrive to, but typically you're looking at, with combinations or subset problems, you're looking at time and space complexity that looks something similar to this. Okay, let's jump into the code and walk through this step by step. Uh, we'll go ahead and build out our template, and then we'll just, uh, we'll go ahead and walk through how, how it's working underneath the hood. So first thing we want to do is we want to create our global result. Okay, and this is going to be um, just an empty array. We want to sort our candidates. Okay, that's another thing we want to do. Okay, I'm just using a JavaScript sorting method here. Okay, and now we want to create our um, depth first search recursive helper. 
Okay, so I'll do depth first search, and then I'll do I, I'll do candidate, target, and then slate. Okay, so now with this, we have three components to this. We have our backtracking case, we have our base case, and we have our depth first search recursive case. Okay, that's our basic template. And so what do we want to do on our backtracking case? We just want to say if target is less than zero, we just want to return. Because there's nothing else down the rest of that recursive tree that's going to add up to our target because we're over it, right? Like we've gone over that limit. So if the, com if the sum of all the numbers in our slate is greater than the target, then we can just return right there. We don't need to go any further. And the reason it's less than zero here on the target is that we're subtracting whatever the value is in our slate on each recursive call from the target. So if it ever goes below that, then we know that the sum of whatever's in our slate is actually over, uh, over the target. In our base case here, we wanna say if target equals zero, that means that, that whatever the sum of our slate values at that point, it equals the target, okay? then we just wanna push into our global result. And we're going to make a copy, a scan of the slate. We don't wanna actually use the slate, we wanna make a copy of it because we're using the same slate array throughout the entire tree. So we need to make a copy of it. I'll just use the slice method here. Okay, and then we'll return out of that. And now we're dealing with our depth first search recursive case, right? So we're gonna be looping through. So we can do for let j equals i, j is less than candidates.length, and j plus plus. Okay, so now what do we wanna check here? Okay, we wanna push in push in whatever's at j onto the slate, and then we wanna pass that into our recursive call, okay? So we wanna say slate.push candidates of j, okay? And now in our depth first search recursive call, we wanna just pass in j. We don't wanna increment j, we just wanna pass in j. That way we're gonna get the duplicates, right? On every recursive call, we're gonna get whatever's currently there, so that way we can handle if it's two, 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 and that's how we're getting it. That's how we're getting to our target. We're gonna uh, consider all the duplicate values, the sum of all the duplicate values, or the sum of any one value duplicate number of times, however many times. So this can be five twos, three twos, whatever. Okay, so here we're gonna pass in our candidates, and then we're gonna subtract from our target whatever's at candidates of J. And then we're gonna at, uh, pass in our slate. And then we wanna pop this off our slate when this comes back. Okay? So that's the basic code for our recursive helper. Now all we have to do is just to uh, call our depth first search helper. So we're going to set i to zero, pass in candidate. Uh, we'll have our target, and then our slate will just be an empty array, and then we'll return our global result. Okay, so that's it. That's the code. It's not too bad. I think the main thing here is to understand why we're passing in j and how that is going to consider multiple uh, instances of that value if they add up to target, which is what this question is asking. The same number may be chosen from candidates an unlimited number of times. Okay, so this accounts for that. Let's go ahead and run that. And we're good. Okay, let's run it again, see if we can get better time. Here we go. So I, you know, every time we run this, it's so funny. Sometimes it'll be 20%, sometimes it'll be 91%. So you just never know. I guess it's really what's happening on the back end that determines um, 
the efficiency of this. But you can see that it is pretty fast. We are, we are getting pretty good performance on this. Okay, so that is lead code number 39. Um, listen, if you are still confused on these, this is not something that's easy to just get like right off the gate. It takes a little bit of time. So, but I highly, highly recommend investing the time to learn this template. And it's right here in the solution, right? Like, you know, I went over pretty much all these questions right here, and it was in a thread in Leet Code that went over all these, and it's just using the same template. And you can see that these types of questions are asked a lot. I mean, they're frequently asked, right? Like Facebook, Airbnb, Amazon, Microsoft, they're all asking this or some variation of it. There's an, another one called phone number and mnemonics, um, you know, combination for phone numbers. And, and it's just the same exact thing. You can just plug and play this template and just solve it in like five minutes. So highly, highly recommend getting familiar with this template and then also really understanding what's happening. Like it's creating a recursion tree. Like how is that working? That way, if there's some constraint on here, like unlimited number of times or duplicates or no duplicates, you can figure that out in the recursive case or the backtracking case. You can make slight variations to this template and account for any of those constraints that the, uh, that the question may ask. Okay, so that is lead code 39, combination sum. I hope you enjoyed it, and I will see everyone on the next one.